Thanks very much for watching. So supposedly the Victorian lockdown, it ends in a couple of days' time. But remember right now that uh, Daniel Andrews would also like the ability to extend this uh, the capacity for lockdowns to go all the way till December. A bloke who was sceptical uh, the last time this went around, but uh, was, of course, watched one by one the hardcore of the... Uh, Crossbench in the Victorian upper house end up selling out the people of Victoria. They're going to do it again. Is David Limbrick, the uh, Victorian Liberal Democrat. He joins us now from Melbourne, not locked down because this is essential work. Him coming here, I appreciate it here. David, um, look, uh, the Premier was kind of clear today that he couldn't be clear about when this thing ends. You get the sense that because cases are not surging forward, we're getting towards the end. But... Remember, of course, there was a couple of weeks of zero cases before everyone was allowed out of the second round. So forgive me for not quite trusting that zero cases equals end of lockdown. What do you think's happening? It's hard to tell. I mean, they said originally that it was going to end on Wednesday night, but th then when we saw the health directions, they actually go out for, for a fortnight. So um, they've given themselves this space to allow for a fortnight. So I think it's pretty hard to tell. And this uncertainty is is so damaging for, for Victorians. It's so damaging for our mental health. It's so damaging for businesses that are trying to plan. And people need certainty in their lives. And, and when we've got this situation where we've been locked down, prevented from doing anything, and we still don't know whether it's going to open up again on Wednesday night, it's um, very distressing for Victorians. So we also know that there is the attempt to uh, uh, bring back the uh, the blank cheque and for that to keep going till December. And I keep talking about it because, yeah, Fiona Patton plays this wonderful game where I'm going to stand up against it and then, of course, ends up being part of the deal that, that puts it all in place. Uh, she also had that upper house inquiry that said, oh, the contact tracing system's so much better than it was last time. But, of course, there were dissenting opinions in that that said, hang on, there might be, there might be some unfixed issues here. Um, do you trust that the lessons learnt from the second have actually been learnt going into the third here? Or are there some uh, people who are pretending to be arm's length but really are dancing to the government's tune? Oh, look, I'm not sure about, you know, what other crossbenchers think, but certainly the government doesn't appear to be, you know, they're doing everything differently. Uh, they're not doing everything differently. Like they've said, you know, this extension, how it went out for a fortnight. When, when the Chief Health Officer wa was asked about that, he said, well, you know, that's the way that they've always done it. Well, I think Victorians want them to do something different. They want, they want them to change the way that they're do th doing things. And, you know, I've had concerns all along about what they've been doing with not disclosing the underlying evidence and the Human Rights Charter assessments. You know, we hear these strange ideas about, you know, hyper-infectivity and hyper-speed, and then we have this hyper-lockdown. I mean, you know, but there's no underlying evidence for any of these things that's been produced to the public. So, you know, I'm not going to be supporting any further uh, extensions on the state of emergency. But also, what you know, we've had this conversation multiple times, and I'm going to underline the point one more time, which is if they want these powers, it should be written into the law what the calculation is for certain things to trigger. Because basically, they could go to full lockdown for as long as they want, for one case, they could have a curfew if they want for one case, yet if uh, it's not even being proposed in the new legislation that, OK, lesson learnt, which is everyone in Melbourne now knows when we get to 10 cases, this happens. When we get to 20 cases, that happens. Instead, we're getting this scenario where, oh, you know, the virulent, you know, UK strain of definitely not the China virus um, is going to wipe us all out, but we won't tell you what locations are actually uh, uh, the places where all of these cases are. That's what I want. Part of the roadmap is knowing, um, OK, crikey, it's coming, it's coming, as opposed to living in fear that the Premier might call a press conference at 10.30 at night to tell everyone not to panic and then lock the joint down two days later. Paul, it's actually even worse than that. Last time when they extended the state of emergency, they actually wrote into the legislation the exact opposite of what you're suggesting. They said if there is zero transmissions, that's still not uh, a reason to end the state of emergency. They actually wrote that into the temporary legislation. So right. they've done basically the opposite of what you're suggesting. Well, I mean, the transparency is what's desperately needed in all of this. David, obviously, it's five days. It is not as punishing as the, the, the previous, but still, it has its effects. When constituents write to you, particularly the regional ones, do they see the justification in, the, in that 
shut down completely of regional areas or do they just go hang on we know it's not here why are we being treated like we're you know the the northern bit of melbourne i mean absolutely i mean <clears throat> my uh, Liberal Democrats colleague Tim Quilty up in Wodonga, I don't think they've had a single case of COVID during this entire pandemic. And yet at the moment, near the border, they're all locked in their houses up in Wodonga. I mean, they just they just don't see what's, what's the point in all. Like, it just seems crazy to them. And, you know, the impact in the city as well. I mean, only literally seconds after it was announced, people were calling up my office in tears and talking to my staff. I mean, you know, this is such a distressing effect on people. And the whole point of the contact tracing was to prevent things like this. So I think that, you know, the fact that we're in a lockdown, um, you know, proves that it's not working properly. You know, uh, contact tracing is meant to prevent a lockdown. The lockdowns aren't meant to be used as a tool to help contact tracing. Yeah, agree completely. David, good on you, mate. Keep that fight going. Appreciate the chat. David Lindbrick there, member of Thanks the Upper House, me. Liberal Democrat. He's a good egg and fights the fight for us on the floor of the Parliament. And we talk to him as regularly as we can. Follow him on Facebook. I'll make sure the details are up on our page at the end of the show.